School Superintendent Dr. Carol Cavanaugh sat down with Jim Cousins on the HCAM Hopkinton Hangout Hour program to talk about the impact of wireless devices and social media on students. We could probably go back like 15 years ago, and I remember we were always saying to kids, put your phone away, this is school, put your phone away, you shouldn't be on your phone right now, there's no time for socializing. But in reality, what we've all come to understand is that that device in kids' hands is not just connections to other people, but it's this sort of rapid paced connection to all the information that they can ever be seeking, right? So someone asks a question, who starred in that movie? Oh, hold on, I'll tell you. And, and we've just gotten to a place where it's your go-to, right? It, it's the thing that you do all the time, whether you need to be connected to other human beings or you need information, what, whatever it happens to be, kids are really attached to these devices now. And it sort of has happened over time. I mean, I'll share a little bit of my worry about students' brains actually being altered, um, that you know, some of our kids are addicted to phones. And one of my huge worries is, you know, we keep talking about the mental health crisis among students. But what I can say is that if we had to say what has changed in kids' lives, I would say it is certainly having that phone 24-7. I think having been a former teacher, I'm very controlled by time. So if somebody told me that my class was going to end at 10-17, from 10-12, 10-13, 10-14, you'd be watching, you'd be squeezing something in, you'd want to make sure that kids weren't spilling out into the, the hallway. And so you were trying to time the ending of that class right at the bell and leave them with something, right? So you will always, and as a result of that, I'm a person who doesn't even go to the watch. I'm always looking for a wall clock wherever I am, and you know they've become scarcer and scarcer. But my brain is trained to do that. And at home, if the battery you know, runs out in a clock or if you've taken the clock down because it's that time of year when you set the clocks back an hour, I'll catch myself looking at that clock several times with frustration because it's not giving me the information I need or it's not where I want it to be. I think the same thing is now happening to kids with devices, but it's much, much worse. And I always tell the story of, when I was teaching high school English, I had a very, very bright student and he went to Yale undergrad. And I, I kept in touch with him over the years. And then more recently, he was at UMass Medical School. And, you know, how's it going? I'm sure things are great. I'm sure you're studying hard. And he said, studying is harder than it's ever been. He said, when I was in high school, I didn't have this problem. When I was an undergraduate at Yale, I didn't have this problem. But now that I am at UMass, my brain is now rewired. I can be studying and all of a sudden, my phone can be upside down and off. But something in my brain says, stop and check your phone. So I do stop studying and I pick up my phone and I look at it and then I put it back down and I get back to studying. But somewhere around eight or 10 minutes later, my brain will tell me again, stop and check your phone. And I do said it's so hard to have that kind of continued thinking and now you know here's a kid that I would think probably had very good self-control imagine our kids who are way into this phone they are so into the demands of of it socially that every two minutes they want to check that phone how does a kid concentrate to be able to do that kind of sustained learning. It's so, so hard, I think. You could check out the whole program at our website, hcam.tv.